Great to have you this evening. Welcome again to Capital Markets. I'm Temple Ashaju. In two months, over, over 1.3 trillion naira has been mopped up via open markets operations auctions by the Central Bank of Nigeria. This move, which aims to push interest rates higher and attract foreign capital into the economy, is also expected to reduce external sector pressures and enhance the stimulation of the economy. This monetary policy has left the shorter term rates in the secondary fixed income market adjusted upward to 15.7% on average from below 12% in May just as discount yields on 364 day T-bills instruments has risen. With these developments prevailing in the system, market watchers have noticed the return of mutual funds to the investment space as more fund managers obtain approval from the Securities and Exchange Commission to invest in low-risk short-term securities. For clarity purpose, this topical issue will be given attention on the program this evening and will be joined by an asset manager who will give us insight into the monetary uh, securities that we have now going around the markets. And then meantime, we'll go for the news and take a look at some of the stories and news that took place this week. This week, Tier 1 lender Guaranteed Trust Bank reported an impressive first half result as it posts a 37% rise in gross earnings of 209.8 billion naira. While pre-tax profits strengthened by 44.8% to 91 billion naira, the profits after tax ended the half of the year at 77.5 billion naira. Guaranteed Trust Bank's net asset also jumped 9.5% in the period under review as basic earnings per share is put at 90 couple. Meanwhile, a 25 cobalt dividend has been proposed to investors. During the week, Access Bank reported a total of 50.02 billion naira in pre-tax profit for its second quarter results as at June the 30th this year. This is in contrast with the 39.11 billion naira recorded last year. The group's net income also came in stronger at 68.45 billion naira against 48.16 billion naira within the same period under review. The lender's profit for the period stood at 39.4 billion naira compared to 31.2 billion naira in 2015, while its earnings per share increased to 161 kobo from 136 kobo. the suspension of bank assurance and other sector-related products by the National Insurance Commission, some listed companies have resolved to continue their dialogue with the regulators. During the week, the Insurance Commissioner, Mr. Mohamed Kari, declared all sectoral assurance products invalid after the central bank ruled out NICOM's oversight functions on banks. However, the chief executives of some of the affected insurance companies expect new guidelines from NICOM to address the move. Bank assurance is still a key uh, a vehicle for us in terms of reaching, reaching customers. And really, it's such a big distribution channel for us that we cannot just, we must find a solution to it. We must find a solution in trying to harmonize CBN and NICOM. Otherwise, a whole big market is being locked for, for, for the insurance industry. And we are trying to get into retail now. One of the best channels of reaching retail is through the banks. They have the retail customers. So we need to open that channel up somehow. Well, I think this, these are actually um, very interesting times for the financial services sector as a whole. You know, the insurance industry, of course, um, uh, playing its rightful position is the bedrock of the financial services sector. Because when all things go bad, that is where we come in. Uh, the issue of capitalization, I think, from our own understanding is that it will be stratified. We'll be looking at a situation where we have what you call risk-based capital. In other words, you will be um, able to underwrite risks according to the strength of your balance sheet. And I think there will be prescribed guidelines to that effect.
The 2016 World Pension Summit has now been scheduled for September the 27th and the 28th in Abuja, the nation's federal capital territory. This time around, the meeting has actuarial valuation as one of the topical issues as the informal sector is also expected to be repeated for discussion at the summit. During this chat with the Director General of the Pension Commission, Ms. Chinelu Anohu Amazu discusses the prospects of the 2016 meeting. I think Nigeria is becoming more than a hub for just pension investments. The, it's, the key thing is the contributory pension scheme that Nigeria started in 2004. And the partnership we have with the World Pension Summit in the Netherlands is to provide a platform for all of Africa to talk and share their various uh, journeys into making the pension uh, systems workable in Africa and above all towards the deployment of pension funds into the pressing needs, uh, both infrastructural, real estate and agricultural needs. So yes, it is um, making it a hub and at least we have the hosting rights for this World Pension Summit for five years and this is the third year running. So we are encouraging people to be here and talk for Africa and uh, across the globe. So actual valuation is also finding its way into the agenda this time. Because you need an actual valuation to determine a whole gamut of things. And the reason for um, it playing a huge um, part in this year's summit is that it's one area that is often overlooked, and yet it's very key, because it's one area that is largely dependent on data. To determine what your actual liability is going to be, you have to understand what it is that you're going to walk through to be able to determine how much you need for your retirement, what your expected lifespan is, and the tables used to determine those rights. We know for sure there's no uh, mortality table in Nigeria. What we're looking for, uh, what we're using is that, that it's, I think, based on the UK mortality tables that is now even obsolete. So part of what we want to bring to the four burner is that discussion, so that we can see what it is to set up not just a Nigerian mortality table, but so that we remove a lot of approximation and decimation in terms of actuarial valuation so we can be as accurate as possible, the ultimate benefit of the retirees. Now last year the micro pension scheme was discussed as the informal sector and it is expected that this same topic will feature once again in the 2016 edition. Uh, why is this important? Well, the topic on micro pensions, which is the acronym for gathering the infrastructure, informal sector, was um, very well discussed and introduced at the 2014 summit. And this year, at the 2015 summit, we're happy to say that the Pension Commission has constituted a, 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 a full department for the um, deployment and implementation of the micro pension. And we have um, got into a wide consultation with various sectors in, under this informal sector scheme. And we, by this we mean those who are in self-employment and not necessarily receiving salaries from the employers. And um, what we found out at this period of a downturn uh, in the nation's economy, and indeed global economy with regards to oil prices, what you find is that there's a propensity for the generation of working force to now move to self-entrepreneurship. And we're poised now to provide them with retirement benefits, even though they're not in formal employment. There's been a, a marked improvement for that structure. We have been able to get that, gather a lot of data and what we're looking for now is to launch into a pilot phase which will enable us to run it through and see where the chinks are. And in the 2015 summit, the key reason for that inclusion is fin it's financial inclusion and above all financial literacy. Because what we find in engaging the informal sector is an abject lack of knowledge on what saving finances investments are all about so we have to incorporate that as you're reaching them to save for their old age you also leverage on the opportunity to teach them how to be financially literate